All righty. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, really want to thank everyone for taking the time um, this afternoon to hear from Catherine and myself as we reflect on the rebuild of classification.gov.au on Gov CMS SAS. The site was launched about four weeks ago, uh, which is pretty cool because I was actually getting a little concerned that it might not make it live for the, for the conference, um, but it was also good in a lot of other ways. It's been, it was a pretty um, long journey, I think. Catherine and myself have got some scars from the project, but we're there now, and that's and, that, and that's that's what really counts. And I think today we can share some of the um, some of those trials and tribulations, and, and more particularly the lessons um, as we went through the process. <clears throat> um, I know a few people in the room, which is cool, but um, obviously I don't know everyone. Um, so by way of introduction, I'm Paul Morris from Salsa Digital. Uh, worked at Salsa Digital for. Oh, probably 10 years now, so as Alfred knows, it's a long time, um, which is all cool. Um, but I've been delivering IT projects for sort of 25 odd years um, across different states of Australia, sometimes even international, US and, and Singapore and the like, so you know, that's been cool. Um, in this particular project, I was the engagement manager on the project and worked closely with Catherine um, as the product owner, which is, I think we've made a pretty good team there, Catherine. Um, and I'll hear more, and I'll mention more about that. Um, a little bit of a fun fact, um, some people know this because I'm quite proud of it, but I was actually born and bred in, um, in, in Hobart, so I'm like really, really pumped that um, you know, Drupal South's here this week. I haven't really lived in Tasmania for 25 years now, but I still call myself Tasmanian and identify as that, so you know, I'm really proud of it, so it's, I'm pumped. So hi everyone, um, I'm Catherine Dreesen. I work at the Department of Communications and the Arts, where I've been for the past 15 plus years, uh, working in various roles across web, IT and communications. I've spent the last few years managing or working on GovCMS projects, the first one being the migration of the department site uh, back in 2014, um, and the last one being the classification website, which Paul mentioned launched a few weeks ago. My role is often as project manager and product owner, um, and for the classification project, I spent quite a lot of time uh, doing both of those roles. So here's an overview of what we're gonna cover today. I'll try and give a really quick rundown of the project. What is classification? Uh, what were the key issues that we needed to solve? And what were our goals? I'll then hand over to Paul and he'll touch on just a few components of the project. He'll cover the GovCMS assessment that we conducted before jumping into the bigger build, the user testing approach that we applied at the design stage, how we applied the Australian government design system, and the delivery methodology. We'll then briefly touch on some of the key challenges and lessons learnt along the way, and we'll finish with a demo of the site just to highlight some of the key functionality. Also happy to answer questions at the end or feel free to approach Paul or I if you want to discuss anything in more detail. So what is classification? In short, Australian classification is responsible for the classification of films, computer games and publications. I'm sure most, if not all, of the people sitting in this room have come across classification ratings in one form or another when you've been to a movie, watched a show on Netflix, or bought a computer game. A film might be G-rated, MA15+, and the ratings might be accompanied by consumer advice, such as mature themes or coarse language. It's these ratings and consumer advice that assist people in making informed decisions about the content that they engage with. The classification site provides a record of all classification decisions dating back to 1972. So that's approximately 1.8 million records, which is a lot. It provides information for both industry and the public, and both audiences have a need to view the records as well as the ratings. So going back to the start of the project, we were facing some really clear issues. The site was last redeveloped 10 years ago, and we knew that it was not meeting user needs or providing a positive user experience. It was dated, content was unstructured and duplicated, 
and there were a number of accessibility issues. We kicked the project off by doing some user research, which confirmed what we already knew, but it also hugely informed the requirements of the new site. It gave us a better understanding of who our users were and the information that they were looking for. In addition to the external facing issues, we were also facing some internal technical challenges. The existing site was on a legacy SharePoint site and it was connected to a number of interrelated legacy systems as well. So our goals were pretty straightforward. The overarching one was to redevelop the classification website to meet the DTA's digital service standard. By building the new site to the DSS, we could ensure we were addressing the key usability and accessibility issues. We also wanted to create a modern and relevant design, improve the IA and content, and enhance the key user journeys, particularly in relation to the search and the experience associated with discovering and searching for classification titles. We also knew that we wanted to move, to the, move the site to GovCMS. The department had a number of sites on the GovCMS SAS Drupal 7 platform, but what we didn't know was whether or not we could achieve what we wanted to with SAS Drupal 8, particularly in relation to the data integration and the possible use of an API. It's at that point that we engaged Salsa Digital to conduct a GovCMS site assessment, which set us up on our journey to build and migrate the classification website. Thanks, Catherine. Um, so as Catherine mentioned, um, we did embark on a, on a site assessment. Now, Salsa's got a, a fairly standard methodology for, for site assessments. Um, we've We've uh, made assessments on GovCMS SAS um, before, also other platforms. Essentially what we do is make a list of, or matrix of project requirements. In this case, we had 79 requirements to assess. You see on the uh, right hand side is uh, a number of rankings of complexity, and we apply each requirement um, a ranking of complexity from low to extreme. The green ones are obviously uh, the low, um, and the yellow is, is, is mid-range. In the case of GovCMS, the, the greens are all, all config um, type exercises, so completely achievable with GovCMS, as is yellow, because it's a theme-based um, change. If we start getting into orange, or we start getting into red, that's when things get really, really hairy for GovCMS SAS, because it involves um, highly complicated work, um, and that's what we really wanted to um, weed out in, in the assessment to try to work out have we got any orange or reds and if so what do we do. So in terms of the actual assessment results, um, firstly most of the requirements were a fit to GovCMS um, SAS D8. Uh, 57 of the requirements could be achieved with just um, configuration. 13 were theme level changes so it's standard sort of GovCMS um, work so it's, it's all good but there were five gaps. So in terms of the gaps, we had to have a plan for those. Now, data import was a showstopper gap. Um, schedule publishing and site notifications were gaps, but they were very minor. And in fact, we've only addressed the data import. The data import was, was a showstopper gap because this um, classification.gov requires a feed um, of recently um, classified titles. So those titles that have had their classifications recently are run into the system via the API that Catherine mentioned and we had to prove this could be done and it's sourced from a national classification database. The movie um, posters that we'll see in the demo against titles are also run in the same API, so getting that working was absolutely critical. So how we set about trying to see if that could work um, is we did some detailed module um, assessment and we also built a proof of concept. Now this is outside GovCMS at this point, but it uses the distribution just to make sure it works. So we built a working proof of concept it could ingest the data that we were speaking about. So at that point in time, we were confident, um, we were confident it could work, we'd proven it could work, but we still had some dialogue with GovCMS to see if our approach could be something that could be thought to be um, put inside the SAS solution. So the likes of um, Nathan and Toby and Teresa and others, we had to talk about the actual modules that we'd um, chosen. Um, and in its detail, but we had chosen the migrate module set um, for this proof of concept. 
also looked at feeds and some other modules. But anyway, we had a good conversation and we did have an in-principle agreement um, for those modules to make the distribution. So that was really a relief because our one showstopper blocker um, was essentially ticked off um, as it would make in the distribution and we had a viable path forward. So that was the assessment. We also did re user research and it was quite extensive. Um, with the user research, we actually partnered with Today.Design and they were absolutely awesome um, in, their, in their user research and also their greater UX. And the first part of the UX was really, really cool, I thought. Um, we actually created some paper-based um, templates of components and we had some sheets of butcher paper like you see these signs over here and we were manipulating these um, elements on the page to quickly arrive at possible home page designs, listing page designs and detailed page designs. So very quickly being able to um, try permutations, discuss, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Now this is just the project team doing this, about four or five groups trying to get the best ideas. But it did allow us to make an initial design. And from that initial design, we could create a, our first interactive um, prototype, a clickable prototype. And this prototype is what we took to external testing. Um, and in the external testing, we looked at two user group types, citizen and industry. The citizen um, scenarios you can see here um, are really concerned with age appropriate content while the industry testing was very concerned with deep drill down into the classification details and trying to make sure that they can see the details they need. And we'll see some of this in a demo. But anyway, so we had a strategy. We had to do some recruiting. Um, there was six citizens and six industry participants recruited. And then we were set with a prototype to go to test. In terms of the test results, so we had really good general feedback. I'm not sure if you can read it. but. The, all those post-its up there are, are good, good thoughts of the site. So, you know, they love the, love the design and, uh, in a general sense, and that built a confidence of our design. The actual scenarios I mentioned for citizen and industry, they also tested well in terms of the flows through the system. I think we had mainly like 13 greens or something and maybe a couple of yellows, certainly no reds. So the flows themselves were, were good and, and valuable to understand and largely um, ratified. The outcome of this, we could compile a series of key recommendations and our design could be moved um, to a production design and something we could build off upon. So we mentioned the design system. Um, so I just wanted to talk about what is a design system just really quickly. And I know there's a whole other track on design systems, so I don't want anyone telling me that's wrong or whatever, and they probably could. But anyway, I'll just give my perspective on my research and what we did in the design system. But the design system um, is a set of existing components to enable a design um, to be assembled, but also reusable components to allow a foundation build um, to, be, to be compiled. Now, the Australian government design system emanates from the DTA. Um, and we use that design system, and I mentioned this with the um, paper cutouts, um, for things like buttons, accordions, um, navigation cards, many others. I've, I've ringed a couple, but there's a whole matrix. There's many more. Go to the site and you'll see them. They're really, really useful um, components. And why are they useful? And why would you use a design system more generally? Because the components are proven and they're standard compliant. They're user tested, they're accessible, they are maintained and also there's a community that sits behind this. And the community idea was really powerful and something we wanted to embrace. So we made sure that you know, we gave back to that community where we could. And since live and leading to live, you know, a few things have happened. Um, our project's now on their community showcase thread. Um, we contributed our design sketch files. Um, the latest sprint they're doing is actually adopting our pagination component. And some of our other components are also under consideration, in particular around search. I wanted to quickly talk about the delivery methodology. Um, I'll probably fly through this. Um, anyone can ask me more about this after. <laughs> um, might be, there's a lot of de detail there. Don't worry too much, but just know that, you know, Salsa only uses Agile. So this is all Agile. Um, this was the initial sprint plan that we compiled when, when we first set up the project. This is even before discovery. So we tried to size the project. Um, 
We, had, we were looking at two design sprints, the yellow cells on the left, the yellow columns, um, and five build sprints, which is essentially the blue columns, um, a go live and a BAU. But this was just a plan. So when we get into an actual project, you know, things change and we need to adapt. So what happened is we actually um, went with um, two design sprints, but we actually had eight build sprints. So we had to cater for a lot of change. And some of the changes that we had to grapple with were um, extra creative scope, some functional scope. The search itself was complicated to do to match the current site. The API itself changed as we went along, so that you know, took some work. And we invested in extra pre-production testing. In terms of challenges and lessons, I'll just fly over these because we'll get to the demo. Um, firstly, uh, credit to Catherine. <laughs> An empowered and committed product owner is absolutely key. Um, in Catherine's role, she made decisions or brokered decisions with the business, and it was really exceptional in how you know, quickly she could turn around those decisions and the type of decisions that could be you know, turned around quickly to our team. I mean, a commitment was above and beyond, so that was great. Investing in user research, we explained that. Um, that was great. Early integration and proof of concept. So I spoke about the proof of concept we had for the data import. The design system and all its virtues. Um, issues happen, we need to be agile. I think the final one, GovCMS says can support rich featured um, sites. So that was one of the goals, Catherine, you had at the start. So, yeah. So now we've got the demo. Okay, so we'll just do a very um, quick uh, demonstration of the site. And what we might do is just jump straight into a classification record. Uh, <clears throat> so here we've got uh, the movie Frozen, uh, because everyone loves Frozen. Uh, and most of the content that you're looking at on this page is all being sourced from uh, the API. So quickly jump across. Catherine loves this stuff. Like. <laughs> I love data. Yeah. Um, here's all of the data coming from the API. And basically, it looks like what you can see on the Frozen page. That's how it's presented on the site. So let me skip that to the frozen page. Oh, yep. um, so if we do a quick scan, we can see that um, some of the key data fields are being presented, things like title, uh, classification, date, duration, um, as well as the title's rating and consumer advice. If we skip down to the bottom of the page, this is where we see a lot of the industry detail. So things like year of production, um, category, producer, uh, alternate titles. If we go to the top, we'll just have a closer look so where we can see the rating image. So this is being dynamically generated. It's pulling in the correct um, image for each rating, um, as well as the separate text for consumer advice. Uh, and each rating also clicks through to um, a general description of what that rate rating means in more detail. Uh, you can see on the middle of the page, we've got uh, what we call the classification matrix. Um, so again, this is how we come up with the rating. It's assessed against all of the different themes, um, things like violence, language, or drug use. Um, and again, the matrix itself is all being generated from the data that it's getting from the API. Um, so each matrix across every title would be different. Uh, if relevant, we pull in a film poster. Um, this adds some visual interest to the page. Um, but it also helps the user validate that they're looking at the right record as well. Uh, multiple titles can also share a file number. Um, so that means that the titles are somehow related. So we've been able to pull these uh, onto the page, allowing users to see what variations exist. For, so for this particular example, we can see that Frozen has a collector's edition, uh, it comes on Blu-ray and there's also a 3D film. Uh, we'll skip across to a search results page. Yep. Um, so if we have a look here, you can see that we've put in the key information, so title, date, format, um, as well as a thumbnail image. And we've also got a number of filters down the side just to help users further refine their search. This format that you're seeing on the page here is also replicated across some of the key listing pages, uh, which includes latest decisions and upcoming releases. 
can skip to the upcoming releases page. Looks quite similar. Um, so this is all of the films soon to be released. We can see the film poster, title, and a visual representation of the rating. Um, and also have the ability to filter by classification again. So that kind of wraps up our demo. Um, hopefully everyone's intrigued enough to jump on the site and have a look for themselves. Um, and we're happy to answer any questions you might have. If we don't have time for questions, we're happy to no. just stick around um, and talk to people if you like. Thank you.